All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's kind of go through. Uh, I want to go through a review of what we've talked about so far, and then kind of bring that up into full circle of what we're going to be dealing with today. So, so far, we've kind of dealt with the holy, holy triangle, right? That holy triangle had to have a right angle. Whenever we're dealing with a triangle that had a right angle, there's a lot of things that we could do. Uh, first of all, well, how we labeled it, remember that we labeled the triangle with an uppercase C, and then the hypotenuse we labeled as a lowercase C. Now the A and B always was changing, you know, it was different. Sometimes A or side A and angle A were on different sides, but just in general, you could label an angle as A, and then the opposite side length would be lowercase a. This would be angle B, and this would be lowercase b. Now that can change from problem to problem, but a lot of times, you know, the main thing that we did is we a lot of times we call our angle C. This is just me labeling it. It could be X, Y, and Z. All I want you to understand is your angles, we use uppercase letters, and then the opposite side we're going to be using the lowercase letters. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, by applying with, by using a right triangle, there's a lot of things that could happen. One thing we knew that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Pythagorean theorem. That was awesome, right? That was very helpful. Then we also knew of, you could say, um, the sine of a equaled a over c. You could do the cosine of a equaled b over c. You could do the tangent of a equaled um, a over b. And we could do this for um, our a and our b. And then you could say the sine of b equaled uh, b over c. You could do the, s or the cosine of b equals a over c. And the tangent of b, which equals b over a. All right, we could apply all that stuff for their trigonometric terms, right? Yeah, this is all possible because we had this, right? And there's even what we're even going to get into later is also we know that since we have a right triangle, this is also going to also help us create that a, a height. So if we wanted to find the length, or I'm sorry, the area, the area of this triangle, we could do 1 half a times b, right? 1 half length times width to find the length of a triangle or the area. Yes? I thought tangent was a over b and cotangent was b over a. It depends on your angle. Tangent is opposite angle over your adjacent angle. Dang. Is this the stuff Einstein can solve? No. So if you look at tangent of a, the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? If you look at angle b, a is not the opposite side of b. b is the opposite side over See, it changes what your opposite side are and what your adjacent sides are. Well, it makes sense, right? If you look at this, what is the adjacent side? The adjacent side is the side that connects your angle to your 90 degree. So that's B. But if you go to what's my adjacent side for angle B, that's not B. That's not that again. That's the opposite side. So now your adjacent side is A. So it's going to change for which angle you're talking about. All right? It's going to depend on what angle you're working with. So <clears throat> that's what we've been looking into so, to so far. We've been able to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the side lengths. We could use our trigonometric functions to be able to find angles and apply, uh, apply a lot of different other parts. And also we could use uh, the area, or just the area of a triangle, to find the, area, or the formula for area of a triangle to find the, um, to find the area of the triangle. So now what we're going to be dealing with is how about, let me even write this a little bit further. How about we now get a triangle that's not going to be a right triangle? All right? What are we going to possibly do when we have a triangle that's not even, that does not contain a right angle? That means pretty much all this stuff now is going to kind of be non-existent to us. We can't apply it. So some of the old stuff that you guys have used before, we're not going to be applying. We're not going to be able to use. However, a lot of the same stuff is going to work. How we label a triangle, we're going to use the same kind of format. If I'm going to call this angle A, the opposite side will be lowercase a. If this is uppercase B, this is lowercase b. 
If this is uppercase C, here's lowercase c. OK? Any questions on this so far? Yes? I mean, it, sometimes I'll give it to you. Sometimes you'll have to create it. Uh, again, it doesn't matter which. If it, you can swap B and C with it, it doesn't matter. All right. But what we're going to work on is the first rule going through this is you know labeling this. And what we're going to learn from a typical triangle like this, we're going to learn how to find the area, and we're going to learn how to find the missing side lengths and the missing angles. And again, we can't use Pythagorean theorem because we don't have a right triangle. We can't use our trigonometric functions because we don't have a right triangle. We can't use this basic formula because we don't have a right triangle. So what is one way we can figure out the rest of the stuff? Well, the first one that I'm going to want you guys to write down is what we call the law of sines. So you're going to want to write this stuff down. So the law of sines goes like this. The ratio of the side length of A over the sine of its angle A is equal to the ratio of the length of side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to the side length of C over the sine of angle C. All right, so now what we're going to do when we're going to want to solve for one of these, we're simply just going to choose and pick what information that we have to go and apply it. So I'll go into more of this, how we're going to use this information in a second. I just want you guys to understand two things. Really, one, what the law of signs are. Two, how we can create, how we write the triangle with uppercase, lowercase, and how the side lengths are opposite of each other. And then three, how this stuff is going to be kind of non-existent for us for a while. We're not going to be applying these. When I ask you to find the, the side length, you're not going to use the Pythagorean theorem unless you have a right triangle. If I ask you for an angle, you're not going to try to do opposite over adjacent unless you have a right triangle. Or you're not going to try to find the area using this formula unless you have a height or a right triangle. All right? So we'll start with that. Now let's get into a problem.